If you're looking for great ideas on what to post on your law firm social media feed, stay tuned. Hi, welcome to the BD Roundtable. We're here today with Joe Escobedo, a B2B brand builder based out of Singapore, to get his top tips and strategies for law firm content creation and repurposing. So in this session, we explore a whole bunch of alternative content creation ideas, useful software, and ways business development teams can create content that converts. Now this session contains an extended roundtable session where we explore a whole bunch of these ideas in more detail. So if you want to watch that or join live in upcoming episodes, head on over to the bdroundtable.com to sign up for free. When you do, you get access to our private Slack group community, which is full of legal marketers like yourself. Now let's jump into it. Now, uh, we're on the call today to talk about content. And as I think everyone on the call knows, uh, the legal industry content leaves um, a lot to be desired. Um, what are, apart from the legal alerts, what would you recommend lawyers and law firms be doing um, on the, the content generation side? So we'll just open it up. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, so it's a very good question. And I think one thing that law firms and most firms need to be particular about is what do they want to be known for? So what it goes back to positioning and messaging, which I think is a lot of companies don't really know what they're doing. So going back to your point, you could pump out tons of content, but there's no focus in terms of, you know, your geographic scope or what your actual offerings are or, you know, who your audience is. It's not really going to make sense. So one thing I always recommend is going back to the, the drawing board and really nailing down what is your positioning in the market? Um, what is your messaging? And there's, you know, if you just Google, I think it's a message message house that'll help you structure it a little bit better. So this is the first thing I always do before I even start advising people on content strategy and content creation is first know that because that'll kind of flow into what you're doing. Um, and maybe oh, I can share. But yeah, you know, that, that's quite difficult because, you know, a lot of our firms are the full service firm. So we do everything in, uh, you know, under the sun. So when you say we have to find out, what did you say? We have to find out what our messaging strategy is or what we want I, to be yeah. known for. Yeah. Well, what could a law firm be known for apart from being like the senior, you know, or trusted business advisors? I mean, we're so, not Adidas or Apple or anything like that. Absolutely. But the problem with that is that everyone that's everyone's positioning. So if I'm just doing a Google search, I have no idea um, what what differentiates you from the others. So as a, as a consumer, I, I don't really know between you know law firm A and law firm B. Um, when I talk about positioning, I always try to look at you know make it more sensible. So look at where the revenue is coming. So for example, if you know that three of your biggest offerings, maybe say 60, 70 percent of what you're doing, falls into those buckets. You can still position yourself as that full service, but in terms of your positioning on the website, in terms of the content, um, you would focus a little bit tighter on that. And maybe I can share an example so it makes sense. Uh, a law firm in the States that was able to increase their conversions by six, over 654%. So once again, here's the first version of the landing page. It's relatively simple, clean, um, but the problem is, there's no clear focus. It doesn't really call out what it is they does. And then you move over to the other side. This is the after, and there's a very clear, you know, big clear font. It's not a bunch of fluff. You get straight to the point. And I think this is something that a lot of companies, not even law firms could, could learn from. And then it goes back to, you know, we were just talking about making it specific for your audience as well. In this case, he says, okay, what's your situation? Let me help you. Um, and you have an option to cl click on, I'm exploring bankruptcy. I'm looking to negotiate a settlement or, or whatever. So, so again, yeah. Yeah. So you can see very clearly that the, the before is your typical law firm. It's about us or it's about the lawyer and the law firm, right? I'm Kate and we've got this. But when you look at the after, it's, it's showing you, you know, what the problem that they help with, right? And they're asking you, what's your situation? So they're turning it to the, the client. Absolutely. Be beautifully said. You're absolutely right. I think too many organizations, whether it's tech or finance or law, just go on and on and on about themselves. And I always try to equate it to a networking event. So for example, if Will, you and I have been at a networking event and you just went on and on about yourself, you didn't ask me about anything about me. Of course, I'm going to be like this Will guy, he's a, you know, self like, <laughs> but 
we do the same thing on our you know digital channels as well you can see you're absolutely right hi i'm tate i do this i have this degree i, I have this kind of background blah 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 but at the end of the day no one cares so you're absolutely right and the, the um after version he says look you need help with your expert loans or you what do you, let me know what you need help with i'm here to help you so mm -hmm. going back to the trusted advisor it's not enough to say i'm a trusted advisor because everyone says that you mm -hmm. have to show them and one way you can show them is through simplifying the language uh creating these little categories that puts it in the audience's shoes rather than the law firm's shoes okay so here you can see it's video right so that's very engaging and it's not just a standard sort of youtube video that's been embedded it's a mobile video and that's different to start right so you're like well what is this right so then you want to click on it so it's a little bit more engaging uh, absolutely i mean there's a couple of different things and there's one thing that i'll talk about a little bit later but you're absolutely right going back to you know a lot of times we think law has to be very stuffy very formal um and it's not a case at the end of the day you are buying from someone else so yes this could be a very high glossy you know corporate video of him in the boardroom um you know different multiple shots and stuff like that but in this case if you are a student that may be a disconnect from you know who you actually wanted to work with so you're absolutely right in this case you know it's a mobile video um he's talking to the camera he's making it a bit more personal and he's asking you know how you can help or how can i help and then once again we'll have to have this gentleman have that on the show but he goes even deeper so for example this is a um, video chat bot so he's talking about briefly about himself and how he can help but then on the video itself you can click you know uh each of these different navigation things you can click oh, i'm one negotiate settlement i want to stop garnishment i want to follow whatever that is um, so once again, it's, it's interactive, but then it's, it's personal. It takes you back to that human level because once again, he could do what every law firm is doing and have these very glossy partner shots in the boardroom, but then. So is this like a pick your own adventure book? Like you can choose which chapter, so you play it and then he'll say, so what would you like to do? And then you pick whatever it is. And then he has a response, pre-made response for that. Yes, I believe that that's the way it is. So, so going back to your point, it's very much for the audience. I don't have to sit here and listen to him talk about his entire spill when all I'm looking to do is negotiate a summit. I click that ten, you know, two seconds later, I'm hearing about you know how he can help with that. So once again, it, it, everything, every piece of content you put out, you know, it's very common sense. It should be for the audience, but so many brands forget about that, and they always make themselves look good instead of going back to what you're saying, helping the audience uh, solve their problems, in this case, legal problems. Okay, so the main medium here is video, making it more interactive and, and getting the lawyers to show their human side. But that requires us to actually get the lawyers to agree to do, to do this. And not all the lawyers are very, you know, willing to go on, on camera. Right. Um, how about for, so we know video is very good. Um, how about written content? What, what are some ways that we can sort of uh, present this written content in a more unique way as opposed to just putting a blog post or a PDF that people will never download? Yeah, and that's a very, very good point. Um, and I think it goes back to what was your target audience and what is the message you're trying to get across? And maybe I can share another example of where I get inspiration um so for example let's say i'm trying to get inspiration a very simple graphic i'm trying to share on, on social media one thing that i'll do is just literally go to google this is a very generic term legal singapore legal advice i'd probably go into more specific ones if you have a, a specific offering you're trying to do and i look at images and i see how people the simplicity so for example i could have a 10 page document on the formalities of a will in Singapore, for example. But this is a very simplistic um, thing that if I'm just trying to get a, a quick overview in terms of what I need to look out for, you know, these simple icons, uh, the short to the point headlines and sub headlines could be a way for me to stand out. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier before the call is efficiency. So one thing you could do is make this a template and you can use a tool like Canva or something similar 
where this is a, a template that you use for all your legal updates. You have you know, the headline, you have three or four key points you want to get across, the logo, and then maybe some icons or something, visual representation. Um, so that might be one way in which you get across. You know, the challenge with that is you have to be able to understand it. So for BD marketing people, you have to understand what the update is and be able to distill that down. Um, you know, that, that's, that's a big challenge if you're not familiar. Otherwise, you know, you just kind of lean on someone in the practice and say, you know what, how would you sum this up for someone in 30 seconds um, or, or one minute? And you can record the audio from a, you know, a partner saying that, and then you, you as the, the marketer, the BD person can take that and distill it down to something a bit more bite-sized. And this mm -hmm. can link back to the bigger one. Um, all right, so we yeah. have video content, we have sort of graphical, you know, simplifications to, to make people, you know, understand it at a glance. Any other sort of content, right? We know podcasting is popular. Any advice on, on that route for law firms? So I think podcasts, basically everyone wants to jump on the podcast because it's the, the hot medium. Yeah. My question is, do, do your does your audience actually listen to podcasts? So this is the question I always ask my audience, which is why I'm not on Apple or Spotify yet, because I polled them and you know only 10% listen to the podcast. So just because it's a hot new medium, I, I would say the caveat is, doesn't mean that you necessarily need to put, uh, create a podcast. Also make sure that you are thinking about it from a long-term perspective. So a lot of people um, create podcasts and they put two or three episodes out. And then they just stop, which, in my opinion, is so much more, so much worse than not creating it at all. Um, so think about the long term, um, you know, strategy you have on, behind it, and how can you sustain it? So what what is the theme or what is the topic you want to carry through? So mm -hmm. for my kind of video podcast I've created, it's digital marketing tips for business leaders in Asia. I don't try to talk about everything in the sun. It's very age specific, because I understood that there was a gap in the market. Um, talking about practical tips for for this audience, um, but once again, I think it's about identifying a niche because the U.S. ones do it very well. Yeah. Now, one thing that I've seen or noticed is a lot of the content that law firms pump out is very reactive, right? So there's a change in the law, then the lawyer will write something. Hopefully, what they write is a bit, you know, very commercial and say these are the main issues. But they're always, you know, waiting for something to change, and then they do it. What sort of evergreen content would you recommend law firms be, you know, producing? And then we can talk about repurposing that on, you know, different channels. Yes, I'm so glad you you asked that as well because I think too too often we look at trending content because it is hot and, and sexy and stuff like that. But you look at the sh average shelf life, and this is something we analyzed when we were at Forbes. The average shelf life for a training piece of content is less than 48 hours. So you could, you know, get, you could see a huge spike in that, but if it's something that's only relevant, you know, in that time period, um, then it's not going to have a massive impact in terms of what you're doing over a long-term perspective. So in our case, we did at Forbes, we always did kind of these very, very, instead of very going deep, we'd give a summary and we'd give our perspective. So for example, if it was, uh, you know, a global thing that happened, we would talk about in Indonesia or Bangkok or so once again, we provided a different perspective um, because once again, we realized that it's important to be have an opinion about it, but we realized that the shelf life was extremely short. So one thing I did instead was to once again, go back to my best friend, Google, and I type in keywords that I know um, this is the fastest way to get ideas. Most of them are evergreen and you can do a quick search to see if they're evergreen or not. So let's say that, um, once again, I'm in Singapore. So Singapore legal advice, I could, I put a space before and after, and I can see what are the most commonly searched terms around Singapore legal advice. So inst interestingly, people are interested in Instagram. Uh, I guess <laughs> what are the impl implications of using Instagram, maybe from a business point of view, um, here's you, let's talk about will here, my buddy will. Singapore legal advice will. <laughs> um, so these are the, some of the things. Templates. This is another thing that, um, once again, if you are an SME who, let's say you may not have the money to hire a lawyer, you may be looking for templates, boilerplates, and things like that you could use for your own. 
these going back to different content formats, this is, this is evergreen. So this is something that, you know, you could update every year or every quarter. Um, and it's still, you know, based here, one of the top searches in Google. So it means that people are looking for that on a regular basis. Um, and then once again, it goes back to the joys of content marketing. Once I download a couple of your, your templates, I'm going to have a, I'm going to feel like I'm, I owe you something. So if I am, ever am a legal dispute as an SME, I'm going to go towards you for my, for my legal services because you have been supporting me for pro free um, by, by providing these uh, templates and, and guides that I could use for my own business. Mm, okay. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about repurposing content because most firms, right, they'll post it on the website. Hopefully they do all the SEO stuff that you should be doing um, on the website. And then they might post it on LinkedIn, potentially on Twitter or, you know, Facebook. Um, and that's it. So I want to give you a, a case study and you tell me what you would do. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm the BD manager. I've been given a legal alert about a change in, let's just say, uh, data privacy, right? Data privacy change in Malaysia. Um, it's a one pager, pretty complex uh, content. Uh, comes to my desk. What do I do? <laughs> what should I do with that to get the most views and get people onto the, onto the website or to get people to book a call? Once again, the first thing I always do in terms of formats is, is pull my audience. And this is something you could ask your clients, your partners, uh, what kind of content do they enjoy consuming? Because once again, you could spend your time creating social posts and blogs and videos and, and graphic infographics and stuff like that. But if you know that your audience is more skewed towards one, and I've done this, it, it, there is a discrepancy. So for example, my audience is in the marketing space. So they like these short bite-sized videos, very visual. If I send them a long white paper, they're going to zone out versus one of my clients is in the finance space. And when they pulled their audience, they liked these kind of, um, kind of these longer, more in-depth, um, either writer reports or blog articles. So if I were to send them something kind of short punching, like it wouldn't be for them. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's no one size fit all. That's why I always, I literally have a simple Google form that I have. Uh, my clients and, and partners fill out and I say, okay, which of these formats do you consume? And I also ask them um, what media or what types of uh, media they're consuming. So for the ex they could, example, they could tell me, um, you know, Joe, I am reading HBR or I am watching this Netflix series. And then I can get ideas in terms of the type of content they actually want to consume versus the content that I want to position. And in my case, um, I did this with my audience and I think about 70% read HBR. So the first thing I did was I signed up for HBR's um, newsletter subscription. And so I just looked at this this morning, I get the updates in terms of how HBR does it. And it gives me some insights in terms of how they like to be, um, I'll try to pull, bring up that example, how they like to be communicated to even the way they do it. So in this case, uh, HBR, Harvard Business Review, has their weekly hot list. So this is one of the things they do. Um, so once again, I can get some ideas in terms of how they format it, the, the, the way they position it. Um, so for example, it's a short headline plus uh, a snippet or what is the, the insight out of it. Um, and then it has by category. So I can see, okay, if I know that they're talking a lot about leadership and managing people, how can I make that applicable in the digital marketing space? So as a CMO, how can you manage your strategy? How can you manage your team for 2021? Mm. So I get a lot of inspiration not only from talking to my clients, but understanding the type of media and also understanding um, how they do it. This is an example from a newsletter, but I've also subscribed to uh, HBR and YouTube to better understand um, even the lengths and the topics and stuff like that. Okay, so pull your audience, see what kind of content they like. Let's say you get a, a wide breadth of different types of content. So we're going back to that original data privacy article. Uh, so we can turn that into a white paper, into a long form content, right? What can we do with that to break it up and put it on, let's say LinkedIn for greatest uh, exposure, for example? So I, I, I take a slightly different approach. And for example, I do all my 
um, updates via video. And the reason for that is, and you can do this as, as well if you're listening to this, um, I can use it from so many different mediums. I can pull the audio and let's say I wanted to do an audio version. I wanted to upload it to Spotify or, or um, iTunes. Um, there's a tool which you can do that pretty seamlessly. Um, I can take, if it's a longer form video of the update, I can go in and I can take uh, maybe 20, 30 second snippets of that and I can seed it across social media. Um, I can pull the transcript. So I, I can either use tools or I can have a, a VA pull the transcript and I can use that as a way to um, have a longer text version. So I, I, I start with video because it's far easier to um, put into different formats. If you are starting with text first, there's a tool that I would recommend that you do that you can auto create videos. Um, some of you may be familiar with it, it's called Lumen5. So Lumen5 is a AI powered tool that allows you to copy and paste um, text. So for example, it's an update or it's a white paper, whatever it is you want to do. And let's see. All right, doesn't give any good examples, but if you've ever seen, um, I'm, I'm forgetting which, which government organization does, I think it's Davos, they're kind of text images and stuff like that with, it's like moving, like almost like a moving slide share. That's kind of what this does. So the great thing about it is it'll, it'll use AI to pull what it thinks are the key points and then it'll auto populate these visuals and, and slides. So you can go in and manually edit, but it's getting smarter and smarter where it understands, yeah, you know, or at least it tries to understand what are the key points and it'll create a short video. Um, trying to find an example. Almost like a slide share video. Um, and it, the great thing is it'll auto populate the, the text. So for example, the text will appear like this. You don't have to do anything. You just copy and paste it into here and it'll give you, um, you can, you can edit it. So let's say you want uh, 20 seconds. I want it two minutes. I want to change the color. I want to change the positioning, but the most part the AI will do most of it for you. All you do is copy and paste it into the platform. Yeah, so that's great. So instead of just posting a link to that long form content on LinkedIn, which probably no one's going to click and read, um, you can just put the key takeaways in the post and put this here and then put the link in the comments for people who want to read it. So it's a bit more eye catching and best of all, you don't need Premiere Pro. You don't need any of these, you know, fancy editing software or whatever. Um, so this is something any, you know, BD competent BD person can set up quite easily and make a template and you're off and running. I, I, absolutely. It's one of the fastest way to create kind of these snap, snappy videos. And like you said, it's about kind of um, mixing with the format. So you could have a text only version, you could supplement with that a graphic like we were showing earlier, or you could have a, you know, a 30 second to one minute video that is a bit more interactive and it goes through each of the, each, each of the steps or each of the takeaways. Okay. Well, I have uh, quite a few questions, which I will uh, extend over to the, the Q and A session. Uh, but for those who are watching on YouTube and not BD Roundtable members, um, where is the best place that they can get in contact with you? Um, so LinkedIn, I'm usually pretty active there. Um, just type in Joe Escobedo um, and she, or the brand builder, you should be able to find me. Okay, we'll put the links in there. And just everyone, uh, Joe does some live uh, YouTube videos. Was it every Thursday? Yeah. Um, so every Thursday, I'm going live on LinkedIn, 12 p.m. SDT. So I usually share uh, marketing, sales, and branding tips. So if you want to join us, it's very much like this, very interactive, very free flow. All right. Thanks so much for your time, Joe. Thanks for having me.